I need to share a story with everyone about energy performance certificates. All right, I realize that's not a very exciting story, but you get the idea. This is really important for people to know if anybody's considering a refurbishment, maybe you've got a commercial property that you're thinking of turning into residential. This is really important because there's so many changes coming to energy performance certificates. Soon we're gonna to go to a minimum D rating, then it's gonna to go to a minimum C rating, and everyone's gonna to have to keep up. But right now, there are some pieces of legislation that cross over and that perhaps aren't quite reflective of the current times and aren't quite fair on the landlords and property investors that are trying to create homes for tenants. So I hope something gets done about this, but this story is vital when it comes to energy performance certificates. So bear with me on it. I know it's not the most riveting of subjects, but it's important for everyone to know. Now, a really good friend of mine is a very successful businessman and his business was situated in a property that was made up of three components. The ground floor was retail premises, the first floor was office premises and the second floor was residential. Now his plan, which was a very good plan, I stand by it absolutely, the plan was to turn the first floor and the second floor into two very nicely presented, well refurbished masonettes. Now, part of that was to change the use from office to residential on that first floor. No problems. Got the planning permission, no problem. Finished the job to a very high standard and those two properties are now, in theory, ready to let but this is where the problem comes in. In order to let these properties out, this very good friend of mine had to get energy performance certificates on those properties. And of course, as you all know, in order to let a property right now, it has to be an E rating or better. You can't let a property if it's anything less than an E rating. There's very serious consequences if you carry on and let a property without having a minimum E rating. Now, he's a very smart guy. So he decided that he was going to try and get these properties up to a spec that future proofs him. And in my previous podcasts, you will have heard me say, when you're doing any kind of refurbishment, think ahead. We are definitely going to go to a minimum D rating. We are definitely going to go to a minimum C rating. Yes, there might be some sort of clauses. There might be some conditions with that, but it's going to happen at some point. So you might as well do it now so that you future-proof you and your property against when the rush happens. Think about it. When the law comes in saying that we've got to be a minimum D rating, then everyone's gonna have to rush and get all this work done. And the contractors are gonna lap it up. They're gonna be saying, oh, well, my price has doubled, shock horror. That's just business, that's the way it is. It's like hotels charging people double during kids' bloody holidays drives me crazy. Airlines do the same. It absolutely infuriates me, but it's the way it is. When there's high demand, prices go up. It's the same in anything. Again, smart move. Tried to future-proof his property investments and his properties against future changes in the energy performance rating requirements. So he gets the EPC. And the second floor, which was already residential, came back as a C rating, fantastic. That is as future-proof as you could be right now, and that's fantastic. The first floor, which was converted from office to residential, came back as an F rating. Now that is absolute madness, first of all, because he completed this refurbishment to the highest standard it could be, but also installed the most energy efficient equipment he could possibly find. He didn't install gas, he kept it as electric only, but made sure that it was the most energy efficient, the top grade of everything 
he could possibly find. Now, under any normal circumstances, that property would have also been a C rating. However, this is where the catch is. This is where he was caught out. And this is where legislation has not caught up with regulations. Because my friend had turned this property from commercial to residential, it then fell under, and this is according to the Energy Performance Assessor, it then fell under new build regulations. And because of that, it was rated as an F. It was unbelievable. So now he can't let that property, unless he goes and spends another four, five, six thousand pounds on different equipment, even though the equipment that he's got in that property is the best you can get on the market, the most energy efficient, the best for the tenants that would be living in this property. But no, he has to go and remove all of that and spend more money on inferior equipment so that it complies with new build regulations. Shocking. So, what does this mean for everyone? There's two messages here I wanna share with everybody. Actually, there's three messages here. Number one, if you're gonna refurbish a property, if you're gonna buy a property, renovate it, and let it out, if you're gonna take your existing property, refurbish it to a higher standard and let it out, make sure you're future-proofing yourself and your property investment against the energy performance rating changes, and they are coming. Number two is if you're going to upgrade your property in any way, then you can use the energy performance rating to command a higher rent. I promise you this, and I'm putting my neck on the line here, there's going to be a point in the very near future where the energy performance rating will dictate the level of rent you can charge. Tenants are gonna be looking for the energy performance rating. They're gonna be looking for the properties that have a higher energy performance rating above the ones that have a lower energy performance rating. I promise you that. It's probably already happening now because the energy prices are ridiculous. Everything's costing so much money. So tenants need to try and save money. And if they have a higher energy performing property, then they have less costs in their energy. So if you're gonna refurbish a property, that's number one. If you're gonna refurbish a property, if you're gonna renovate a property, then make sure you future-proof yourself. And I would try and get the energy performance rating up to the highest level it can be right now so that you can charge more in rent. It's gonna be a better property for tenants. You'll have longer term tenants as well. But number three, if you are converting a commercial property to a residential property, then check with an energy performance assessor, check with your council to make sure that you're not gonna get crucified by regulations that don't comply with common sense. I'm just saying it as I see it, as I think it is. I might be wrong. Look, I understand why they are pushing new build regulations on conversions from commercial to residential, but it's not a new build. If you're gonna do something like that, then create specific legislation for compliance with commercial to residential, or at least types of commercial to residential. Anyway, I don't know the ins and outs of that, I don't do commercial to residential myself. There has to be some more logical way of doing it. I feel sorry for my friend because he's a successful businessman, but he's a very honest guy. He's a very straightforward guy, not greedy, just wants to make a better investment for his family. And he's been crucified a bit there. And it's unfair. It's not right. So let me know what you think. Are you currently worried about energy performance certificates and the changes that are definitely coming. Have you got a property that you don't think will ever be able to comply with a C rating? I'd be interested to hear. You can contact me, it's tom at sonegroup.co.uk or comment on this video or contact me through my Facebook page. However, I'd love to hear from you. Speak to you all soon.